Good morning, media friends. Welcome to the fourth session of 12th MPC. For this session of conference conference, we will talk about the speed up development of agricultural modernization. We are very glad to invite Mr. Han Changfu, Ministry of Agriculture, and also the speak person, Mr. Ye Jingchen, based on today's topic, they will answer the questions from the floor. Now, first welcome Minister Han. Dear friends from the media, good morning. Mm. It's my pleasant to take this opportunity to share with you on agriculture issues, and thank you so much for all your long-term cares and support to me agriculture. In 2015, we have achieved a 12 year consecutive increase in food crop production, and we had a lot of new great news in this regard and in agriculture, which also gave the great support to national economic development. And in the a Prime Minister's working report, he also mentioned the a working target for agriculture. We will fully drive reform for supply set and speed up the modernization and also increase the income for farmers. And also, we will fill in the gap or improve the weakness in agriculture from farmers and the rural areas. And now, me and Mr. Ye will welcome your questions. Thank you. With CII, my question is about food output. Last year registered the 12th consecutive year of the increase of food output. Meanwhile, the stockpile of food also rose, and the import of corn and rice rose as well. My question is, do we have enough food in China, and will such trend of increase of food crop going to increase going forward? For the question regarding food or crops, that's always a very big issue for the country with 1.3 billion population. My understanding is your question between three issues, right? First is whether we really have the increase in output, right? So we have the 12th consecutive years of increasing in this regard. This is, we hit a new record in history. We increase obviously in the capacity of crop output. When this increase, of course, in the hand, we also have the rising in inventory. We have enough supply, and especially for the key production areas. There is run out of space to store crops. From my basic understanding is we have a very good harvest, we have enough food, and we have a little bit extra, which all of these are good news for us. Why I'm saying this because if we choose run out of food or have extra food waiting to offer, then we still will choose we have extra food on hand, so we feel much secured, right? There are three sentences based on my experience. More crops, less issues. Less crops, more issues. 
will have more crops, more food, which will increase the fiscal burden. But we have less crops, then that's the issue regarding supply and demand that will, in the end, cause the social issues, right? For second sentence, we have more crops, less channels, less crops, more channels. We have enough crops, enough food. Then the people do not need to store a lot of crops at home, and we have less companies in this regard. So we have more stocks which actually exist in national warehouse, and especially for corn, we have more actual inventory. And the third sentence, we have less situation or time period with more food on hand. We have more time period with less crops on hand. So as President Xi Jinping says, we should always keep great importance to crop outputs before harvest and after harvest. So we should always think about how we can guarantee and ensure we have enough food on hand instead of when we really face the situation without food and we think about where we not store them a little more ahead of time. Therefore, for us, we always need to make sure we have a very high importance attached to crop output. For a 13 five-year plan, period, we need to focus on first, the population size will sure increase, especially after we roll out the second child policy. We have already did the calculation. We will have 16 million more people, we will have 16 million new babies coming for the Milk, eggs, high quality food are highly required. So the uh, consumption on agricultural products were much higher than the consumption in rural areas. And third, people change their structure of consumption and they're also upgrading their consumption. So the size of population, urban residents, and third, consumption upgrading, these three aspects. In China, before we're facing the peak number in population, we should expand the output of crops. And for your second question, to say we have a very good harvest of crops, why we still need to rely on imports, the import increase? Yes, we import around 120 million tons of imports. Part of that is required by structural needs, such as soil beans or the uh, high quality of powder. Another is also because the price difference within China and abroad. That's more about the pricing competition. One is required by the structural reform, another is price competition. The price all overseas is much lower than us because we have a small scope of production in agriculture, so we not really have the competitive advantage in pricing. That's why we import a lot more overseas. From structural wise, we import 80 million soil beans, and the rest is the uh, uh, grain. So right now we're also working on reduce the cost of production, so we rely on the advanced technologies. For our next steps, are we looking for 13th consecutive increase or even 14th in consecutive years? This is our target. For 13 years, five-year plan, we not really pursue the consecutive increase. These should depend on our structure. But we have clear targets. We should maintain and increase the productivity of output or the crop output. So we need to 
work in this way from strategic perspective. First, we should have the crops in land. We need to preserve, maintain our cultivating lines with high quality, and we also need to draw out high technologies to help increase productivity. And we also need to focus and give a, a support to mean productive areas. 70% of our crops come from the mean production areas, especially for the commercial products. And we also need to foster the new product areas so we can increase efficiency. Overall, crops in China for mid to long term and for bigger picture we not have too much in hand to ask we have more or less no matter more or less there's more technical issues to maintain the crop safety that's our strategic issues so, so the technical should follow the strategic Direction. 持续增长，能否实现持续增长？农民工能否同步步入小康？谢谢。With economic daily, last year the price of food dropped. The macroeconomic situation was not so good, and the migrant workers found it difficult to find jobs in cities. In this and such circumstances, will the will the wage of farmers increase? And how what measures will be taken to help farmers increase their wage? Thank you. Uh, we talk about the income or wages of farmers. This is a very, very crucial issue among agricultural farmers and the rural areas because this is the well-being of farmers and how farmers can enter to the prosperity with all other nations. For a 12th five year plan, the income or the wages for farmers were quite good. The disposable income reached 12, 120 million, increased 9%. Another good news we achieved six consecutive years in terms of the increase of income higher than increase of GDP, which is how to fill in the gap between the income or wages in rural areas and urban areas. So the farmers have more sense of achievable. As you mentioned, in certain five-year plan, right now the pricing of agricultural products or let's say the majority of the agricultural products dropped due to the downturn pressure of economy. The number of migrant workers bring a quite big difficulty, which is more complicated for farmers to increase their wages. To be frank, for the 13th five-year plan, increase in wages it's very hard for us. This is also bring a very big headache to me. As you mentioned, as the documents we issued regarding the draft of 13th five-year plan, we have 25 indicators, and one of it is regarding the income. So during the time period, their wages increase should above the speed of 6.5%, which should be same, similar to the growth of GDP or even higher than GDP growth. Till 2020, we should double the number. If we can achieve 6.5%, 
then we can make it happen, which means we double the income compared to 2010 levels. How we achieve this target? We studied the incentive policies for farmers. For more details, we listed five areas. Or let's say we, ha we want to have five channels to get the increased wages. Right now, the pricing is increasing, and we cut cost. In other side or in other meaning, we also save money. So we need to upgrade our technologies and also, let's say, our water saving or the oil saving or the fertilizer saving way. Scale operation also can help to increase operation efficiency. Second, we talk about the industrial processing or the structural industrialization. We talk about internet and also think about how farmers can have different ways to bring more added value to their property. And third, we talk about integration of rural and urban areas. Sometimes the rural area issues, we should find a solution in the urban areas, vice versa. So we need to first be fair for the uh, rural and urban areas and also provide or grant the residency to rural people. And we also need to give strong support, especially in the uh, subsidies of wages to Farmers. Right now, the overseas farmers, especially the developed countries, 40% of the income of farmers coming from the government subsidies. We have much bigger number, number in China, but we still have great potential. Five, we should work on the uh, collective rights system reform. We should evaluate their properties and also do the a stock cooperative way so the farmers become the shareholders so they can get more resource of capital. So this is based on the community com committee of full deepening, fully deepening reform. This is uh, the five ways we think all the possibilities to increase the wages for farmers. Thank you. Thank you。谢谢主持人。韩部长您好,我是中央电视台央视网央视新闻客户端的记者。那么我们发现呢,在刚刚出炉的十三五规划草案中有这样一句话,就是农业现代化要取得明显进展。那么其实我们也发现,
become more, more difficult for farmers to increase their income, and the cost of agricultural production will keep rising. Such resource restraints as land and water <coughs> will increase. Meanwhile, a lot of uh, foreign agricultural products are compar comparatively inexpensive and of high quality, and in this context, the international competitiveness of Chinese agricultural products may not be as good. So uh, my question is, what is the possibility of achieving significant progress, and what measures will be taken to ensure this? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I think you are quite concerned and sensitive to the current situation of agriculture. For agricultural modernization, yes, we mentioned we should make significant progress, which is also required at the fifth plenary session of NPC of the 18th CPC Central Committee. Then what measures or the solutions we have? The current situation is the recent years development of agriculture has achieved a great success. Premier Li Keqiang mentioned we have a significant increase or improvement in the agriculture productivity. We talk about and we got 12 consecutive year of increasing in output. So which are around the six or seven or six, ten million metric tons. So this is the three consecutive year of output above 300 million metric tons. So you ask about other indicators. The contribution rate is 56 percent. So which means the technology drives the overall increase. And we have a lot of production rely on machinery. And the effective we have a very good irrigation ratio, so we have a very good solid foundation and the numbers in our performance. We talk about information, informalization, modernization, and urbanization. For agricultural modernization, we still need to be further improved. For certain five-year plan, we should strengthen or improve our weakness. Overall, we should based on the new technology to create a high efficient energy saving, environmental friendly and high productivity way to improve the agricultural modernization. We need to achieve three transformation or upgrading. Number one is the operation operational structure. Right now it's still a one single household to do the operation. Right now we need to gather it all together or let's say we have multi ways of operation. Second, we need to upgrade the productivity structure. We need to have more innovation and technology. So we need to have more or we need to let the te high technology to drive the, con the agriculture modernization. So no matter is agriculture processing or other planting or breed field, we need to increase or add more value to the supply and the value chain. So we need to focus on the competitiveness productivity and quality, all of these three aspects should be improved in certain five-year plan. We should fully facilitate these targets, but we also need to say different countries or different areas have different time schedules. 
So we have the pilot and the demonstration areas. So by the end of 13 five year time period, they should achieve the modernization in agriculture. If you ask me about what target we want to hit, we have a lot of calculation behind. I will not give you the whole list, but I would like to mention the highlights. First, we need to ensure the three missions. We ensure supply, ensure quality, and ensure the supply. So we need to have enough food for people we have enough or increase the wages for farmers and ensure the green agriculture. So for the ecological protection, we all talk about the agriculture pollution. We need to break the limitation on resources and improve and have less pressure on limited resources on agriculture and also do ecological friendly productivity. Based on the central government's requirement for the next five years, by 2020, when we finally build up the prosperity society in all aspects, we have better quality of food, and we have more wages for the farmers, and we have a more beautiful agriculture in China. For farmers, with all other Chinese people, will come to the fully prosperity society. Thank you, Mr. 我们都能感受到食品安全一直备受关注，特别是农产品食品安全案件近年来时有发生，所以我想请问韩部长，我国农产品质量安全状况到底怎样？农业部将会采取什么措施确保老百姓舌尖上的安全？谢谢。With China dot org. The problem of food safety has attracted big attention in recent years, and we have seen some cases concerning food safety. My question is, Mr. Han, what is the situation of the quality and safety of agricultural products in China? What measures will be taken to ensure food safety in China? Thank you. I think your question is also the big concern among the society. This is also quite big pressure to Ministry of Agriculture. Food is the first priority of people. Food safety, food quality is strictly related to people's health. So the whole society and also media friends had a very high attention on, in this regard. This is also our responsibility to achieve safe food. From us, our attitude is very clear, which is that we cannot guarantee zero happening on food safety, but we have our zero tolerant on the issues of food safety, and we will search all the solutions to deal with it. In the recent years, from the central government to local governments, big efforts have been invested in the food safety, and we've already seen the good momentum in this regard. For the vegetables, crops, meat, fish, actually, for all these aspects, we have the indicators to do the spot check, and the result is positive. However, we cannot say there is no issue behind, and we cannot neglect it. We have 1.3 billion people waiting to eat food, which means we have a very large amount of food consumed every day. A very small issue happens to a single crop, then that can cause a very huge issues in the society. We'll consume 100,000 tons 
of agriculture, of vegetables, and 200,000 fruits, and 300,000 meats all together, which is a very high number. So this is also give us a very big pressure, and we also feel the burden on us is very, very heavy, and this is also our responsibility to guarantee the food safety, and we'll work all our effort to keep increasing the food safety. We overall focusing on two hands. One hand, we focus on um, the productivity, safety, and on the other side, we'll increase the management so they can eat enough food and also eat safely. For the measurement, first, we need to have a clear responsibility who should own or the which level of government should own what kind of responsibility. So we build up the mechanism for each and every region, county and province. And second, we strictly monitor the add-ins in the food. And we have the, a very strict attitude on punishing the illegal add-ins to the food. And third, we, we have strict management on the production source. So at the a production areas, we have a very strong management in each key production areas. From the beginning of this year, Ministry of Agriculture will launch the regulation and the laws on the uh, fertilizer and the pesticide purchases. Who buy them and who sell them to whom? And the fourth will focus on the standardized production. So we focus on the family corporations. So they will follow the standard principles. So the standard productivity will roll out later on to all key production lines. Number five, we build up the green system from the production areas to selling areas, from the farm line to people's tables. We make sure the whole process to be secured, and we will do one category by another category. You cannot just say, come very suddenly, this is green. You need to have a proof, or you need to have the a demonstration behind. You cannot cheat the consumers. So we focus on first productivity, and on the other hand, we also focus on management, so we can have a better solution on food safety. Thank you. Uh,谢谢,我是塔斯市地址。With Itatas, my question is, during the 13th five-year plan, what kind of agricultural cooperation will be conducted between China and Russia? Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Chinese is so great. China-Russia relationship is always good and very smooth, and we are very good neighbors. For agricultural cooperation, it's the bilateral cooperation which plays a great role in this regard and the leaders attach great importance from both countries. The cooperation or let's say the existing cooperation have a very solid foundation for the, our next step. We should 
further strengthen and invest more in the agricultural cooperation because it brings the win-win situation to both cons consumers and farmers in both countries. The question you ask, we can further cooperate in the following regards. First, the bilateral investment. We support enterprise to invest in both countries. For Chinese side, we have a lot of companies, especially in Northeast region. In Heilongjiang, we have a lot of corporations or the companies going to Russia to do investment. Second, we should enlarge the trade. We have a lot of supplement crops, and we also want to export high-quality food to Russia as well as the same situation for Russia side. And third, we also need to cooperate in technology field. Russia, in this regard, have, has so many years of research and development in technology, agricultural technology. For China, in recent years, we make a lot of breakthroughs, so we can have a lot of cooperation, we have joint research and technology transfer, or let's say talent training. All of these are the options for both countries. As long as it's good to the people's, consumers, farmers, for both countries, we are willing to do everything. Thank you.